Hello students, welcome to EPG Part Sala. I am Dr. Vishwanath Tiwari from Central University of Rajasthan. Today I am going to talk about a module that is functional reconstitution of membrane, membrane biogenesis and membrane fusion. This module has been taken from paper membrane biophysics. The membrane as you know consists of phospholipids, bilayer and protein within it. In this module, we will discuss how the fusion of the bilayer towards molecular dynamics of coarse gain as well as in vitro fusion reaction. We will also discuss the different assays that are used to measure membrane fusion. This module has been divided into following sections. First, introduction. Then we have bilayer fusion. Then we will discuss the physical modeling of membrane fusion. Then we will discuss in vitro fusion reaction. Then we will discuss membrane microdomains. And then in the last, we will discuss the assay of to measure the membrane fusion. In membrane biology, the fusion is a process by which two initially distinct bilayer rearrange their hydrocarbon cores and resulting in interconnected structures that is known as membrane. The fusion entail extensive lipid rearrangement of two opposed or docked membrane vesicle joining their membrane protein and lipid as well as mixing their content without lysis. If this fusion process completely take place then the content of two structure can be mixed. Alternatively, if only one leaflet from each bilayer is involved in the fusion process, the bilayer is said to be hemifused. In hemifusion, the lipid constituted of outer leaflet of two bilayer can mix, but inner leaflet is remain distinct. The aqueous content Enclosed, enclosed by each leaflet also remains separated. So, hemifuge structure and fuge structure are different. In hemifuge structure, only one or outer leaflet is fused, and in completely fuge structure, both the outer and inner leaflet are fused. So, fusion of the membrane in the second secretory pathway involves RAB GTPAs. Their bound effector protein mediate downstream steps, snare protein which can snare each other in cis where the when these protein bound to one membrane are in trans position when anchored to opposed membrane, snare associated protein that is also known as SM protein, for example NSF SAC 18P snap etc which cooperate with a specific lipid to catalyze the membrane fusion so these three protein rab snare and snare associated proteins are involved in the fusion of secretory membranes in contrast mitochondrial and cell cell fusion events are regulated by use of distinct catalysts Fusion is also involved in many cellular processes, particularly in eukaryotes, since the eukaryotic cells is extensively subdivided by lipid bilayer membranes. The exocytosis, fertilization of an egg by a sperm, transport of waste product to lysozyme, are few of many eukaryotic processes that rely and the some form of the fusion. Fusion is also an important mechanism for transport of lipids from their site of synthesis to the membrane where they are needed. Not only that, the entry of the pathogen is also governed by fusion. As many as bilayer coated viruses have dedicated fusion proteins which enter into specific host cell. So, it is also important in interaction of pathogen 
with its host. So, there are two type of fusion you can see. In one fusion, you have a fusion of the lipid bilayer which does not have the protein. So, fusion of protein free lipid bilayer. So, ability of lipid to spontaneously assemble with the lipid structures is known as liposome or lipid membranes. The supported bilayer has been instrumental in modeling the condition of bilayer fusion and defining the sequence of intermediate structures formed in the course of bilayer fusion. So, we will discuss how a intermediate structures is formed in bilayer fusion. So, investigators have investigated the fusion pathway of protein free lipids or protein free membrane and identify the two important type of intermediates. The first intermediate is a hemifusion structure formation and second is fusion pore formation. What is hemifusion structures? So, hemifusion structure represents connection between outer leaflet of opposed membrane while inner leaflet remain distinct. So, in hemifusion structure, only outer leaflet of the membrane is involved in the connection. In most cases, hemifusion has been identified operationally as lipid mixing without content mixing or mixing of lipid of outer leaflet but not the inner leaflet of two bilayers. Hemifusion has also been confirmed by electrophysiological measurements. A hemifusion connection is often a transient structure that either dissociate or leaving two separated membranes or give rise to a fusion protein or fusion pores. So, what is fusion pore? The fusion pore is a connection between merging membrane and it involves both outer and inner leaflet. In contrast to hemifuse structure, they have both outer and inner leaflet components. The formation of a fusion pore stabilizes an aqueous connection between volumes initially separated by opposed membranes. Fusion pore formation and its expansion has been studied using electrophysiological approaches and fluorescence assays that monitor mixing between aqueous content and lipid of inner leaflets. These studies have established that fusion pores can close and the fusion pore as is covered with polar head of the lipids. The pathway which includes fusion formation and pore formation and formation of the yeah, fusion of the lipid bilayer is known as fusion through hemifusion pathway and it consists of different steps. The first step is pre-fusion contacts. Second step is a point like membrane protrusion minimizes energy of hydration repulsion between the proximal leaflet of the membrane coming into the intermediate contact. And then a hemifusion stack with proximal leaflet fused with the distal leaflet unfused. Then stack expansion yielded the hemifusion diaphragm. Then a fused pore forming forms either in the hemifusion diaphragm bilayer or directly from the stack. And then different lipid spontaneously form monolayer at with different curvature thus demonstrating different effective molecular shapes. For example, monolayer is usually formed by inverted cone-shaped lysophosphatidyl choline. Cone-shaped phosphatidyl ethanol amine moves in the direction of polar head. Diacylglycerol bulges in the direction of hydrocarbon chain. The cylindrical phosphatidyl choline form an almost flat monolayer. Here in you, you can see that how a hemifusion pathway of lipid bilayer fusion. 
firstly two membrane contact with each other form point like protrusion and then hemifuge structure is formed where only outer leaflet is fused and then fusion diaphragm is formed and after formation of fusion diaphragm there is a formation of fusion pore and after the formation of fusion pore based on the requirement of the membrane the curvature in the membrane is created there are different type of curvature is created based on the composition so you can see that how the two membrane contact hemifusion structure is formed and then fusion pores are formed during the membrane fusion so how we will monitor or physically model the membrane fusion there are different efforts by many group of physicians and physical chemists has been done in past decade to model the process of lipid bilayer fusion this research followed two major strategies first is known as continuous approach and second is known as simulation approach the first strategy that is known as continuum approach is based on the modeling membrane as macroscopic continuous film that can be described by methods of classical physics such as elastic theory of lipid monolayer and self consistent mean field theory of lipid bilayer interior this approach is used to determine the condition guaranteeing that the state of fuse membrane is energetically more favorable than initial state of two separate membrane and thus the membrane have a tendency to fuse second the sequence of structural transformation that the two initially separated lipid bilayer undergoes upon their merges third the energy cost of every sequential intermediate structure emerging in the course of these transformation and the condition under which these intermediate structure do not present energy barrier that kinetically restrict the fusion process and hence limit the fusion feasibility the second strategy that is known as simulation approach use computer simulation of the membrane fusion process and will refer to the simulation approach simulation approach is based on the state of art computational methods developed in soft matter physics such as molecular dynamics of coarse grained and atomistic detail model of lipids and aqueous solvent monte carlo simulation of di block copolymer membrane within a homopolymeric solvents brownian dynamic simulation of simplified coarse grain model of lipid with no explicit solvent then dissipative particle dynamic simulation of a coarse grain lipid and water model accounting correctly for the hydrophobic forces developed in the system so in coarse grain model simulation approach which is also known as cg model this is used for protein lipid modeling cluster of 10 atom including hydrogen are substituted by a single cg beads or coarse grain beads four water molecule become a water bead and a ion with its hydration cell become an ion bead so the chemical building block of the lipid are reduced to a single cg beads and each amino acid is represented by two cg beads one from the backbone and other from side chain except the glycine which is represented by a single backbone cg beads after building the cg structures one need to determine rules determining its dynamics following a common approach of molecular modeling it is assumed that cg beads are point like masses that obey newtonian mechanics interacting through effective potentials bonded beads are connected by harmonic springs a harmonic angular potential help to maintain 
shape of the molecular chain. Long range interaction is represented by Leonard Jones C12 potential and also by Coulomb potential. The bond length and angle of the CG model are usually extracted from averaging the corresponding distances and angle over representative all atom structures. The developed protein lipid CG model proved to gain a substantial speed up in comparison with all atom simulations. While the later case, the time step is limited to 1 to 2 femtoseconds, the CG simulation can run with 25 to 50 femtosecond time step because of the greater mass of the particle and a smoother potential for their interaction. Possible speed up depend on computer power you have. For example, simulating a 3 lakhs particle all atom system on 48 processor, 0.1 nanosecond of the dynamics is a one day process. The same system in CG representation compromises 30,000 particle only reaches performance up to 150 nanosecond in a day. So based on the computer system, this is simulation can be done in an effective way. Because of smaller number of the particle per processor and large interaction time steps. Accordingly, based on the simulation computer, your speed is maybe 1500 times higher in a computer with more processor so because this is a computer or simulation based approach so the study the information what we are gathering is also depend on the simulator we are using or computer we are using for the simulation after discussion of how there are two models which is used for monitoring the fusion reaction let's have discuss in vitro fusion reactions so luminar compartment mixing that occur upon membrane fusion provide an assay for fusion events. Gauzy fraction isolated from vascular or virus infected chosel line lacking N acetyl glucosamine transferase have viral G protein with abnormal glycosylation. Upon incubating the Golgi from wild type and uninfected cell, the fusion step of trafficking delivers the VSBG protein from infected cell mutant Golgi to a menosyl transferase within wild type Golgi's and menose addition can be assayed as a marker of fusion. The assay is blocked by N-acetyl melamide that is you can say NAM and compartmentization of NAM block reaction by fresh cytosol allowed isolation of NAM sensitive factors, which is a soluble peripheral membrane protein. NSF winding to the Golgi require a second peripheral membrane protein, the soluble NSF attached protein that is also known as SNAP40. The affinity chromatography of brain detergent extracts and a matrix of immobilized SNAP and NSF yielded a complex of syntaxin, centobridin and SNAP25. This protein has been identified in earlier studies and has proposed to be the central in synaptic transmission but their specific association with NSF and NSF uh, SNAP establishment their roles in membrane fusion. Synaxin Sneptovridin and SNAP23 were termed as SNARE and it's for soluble NAM sensitive factor attachment protein receptor that is SNARE. So in vitro fusion reaction also in firstly involve SNARE protein. So SNARE are found in all eukaryotic organism and required for each step of exocytic and endocytic trafficking pathways. They have a common heptid repeat snare motif which form four helix coiled coil structure known as snare complex.
through most amino acyl residues that are buried within the four helix snare complex structure are apolar the o layer at the center is almost invariably composed of three glutenyl residues and one arginyl residue so it have three glutamine and one arginine these are formed the basis of classification of snare as q snare according to the sequence conservation it is divided into further qa qb and qc virtually all characterized natural snare complexes are of the composition qa qb qc and r snare are also have variable n terminal domain that preside the heptad repeat most snare have a single transmembrane anchor near their c terminal although some are anchored by penyl group or by phosphatidyl inositide binding domain snare complex are termed cis if all their membrane anchor are in one bilayer are trans if they have anchors in each of two opposed dock membrane snare complex disassembly assembly and fusion are regulated by snare associated protein or snare associated factors as you can see in the figure a cycle of snare association where snare complexes associated with sac at and atp then trans snare complex is formed followed by cis snare complex and cis snare complex again recruited sac at and in this way the cycle of snare association and dissociation takes place the complex are disabled by sac at which are triple a family atp a chaperon along with the snap or sac 17p snare become enriched in fusion component microdomain and pair in trans with oligomerization of trans snare complex snare pair are often associated with other protein mostly sac1 family sm protein sm protein are required for each intracellular fusion and different sm protein associated with snare complexes with n terminal peptide region of certain synectin that is qa family members are with the folded n terminal domain of other syntaxins despite structural studies of snare sm co crystal it has been unclear still how sm protein promotes trans snare pairing and fusion the neuronal sm protein muns 18a catalyzes the formation of ternary complex of cognate neuronal snare activating them from lipid mixing while suppressing their capacity for other snare combinations since each sm protein is physically and functionally specific to a limited number of organelle the sm protein may provide a vital role or vital layer of specificity to trans snare complex assembly and the function so you can say that it is the sm protein which is deciding the specificity of snares in different different organelle then we have gt pairs which belongs to raf family and it is very essential for the fusion sac 4p is example of it is required for docking secretory vesicle at east plasma membrane and found to be a rare super family gtps whose cycling between gdp and gtp bound form are controlled by gtpas activating protein and guanine nucleotide exchange factors in this gtp bound form sac 4p binds to a complex of the protein term as exocyst linking the secretory vesicle to the plasma membrane as at exocyst docking and fusion at each organelle require a unique large threading complex for example 
the trap complex at cis golgi and hops complex at vesicles that interacts with rab gtps and other factors for thithering and catalyzing exchange of gtp for gdp and thereby activating the rab gtps of the same family as sac 4p term rab are ypt protein were found for every organelle and different taxas studied for example rab 5 gtp is required for mammalian endosomal homotypic fusion when the detergent extract of endosome were passed over a column of immobilized rab 5p rab 64 66 gtp a broad selection of specifically bound protein were found each subsequently known to be active in cell free assay for endosome fusion some of these rab 5 gtp factor catalyzes phosphoinositide synthesis bind directly to the phosphoinositide or both providing a early link between protein and lipid for membrane fusion these lipid contributes to the formation of fusion active microdomain serve as a platform for binding fusion protein to the membrane and themselves undergoes non bilayer rearrangement during hemifusion and fusion the membrane microdomain is another specified platform for the fusion and it is also considered to be very important in term of membrane fusion this has been especially clear in the studies of the fusion of membrane endosome and isolated yeast vacuoles the endosomal rab5 is activated by gnef rab x5 and in active form it's bind to the effector rabeptin 5 to form a ternary complex rabeptin 5 in turn activate rabex5 and ensuring that rab5 remain in the gtp bound form and is not extracted by guanine nucleotide dissociation inhibitor the activating rab5 also bind phosphatidyl inositol 3 prime oh kinase and phosphatidyl inositol 4 5 phosphatase which create more phosphatidyl inositol substrate for the three kinase to act upon the local synthesis of pi3p allows high affinity localization of the effector protein eea1 which have affinity for both activating rab5 and thought its fyve domain for pi3p these microdomain organized by rab5 provide favored site of endosomal membrane fusion yeast vacuole homotypic fusion is another example of rab directed microdomain assembly so vacuole has diameter of microns or more which allows fluorescence light microscopic visualization of the docking of the ensuring special distribution of fusion protein and lipid on docked vacuoles and of the fusion event itself the dock vacuoles are drawn against each other to form a pair of opposed disk like microdomain that is known as boundary membrane the region surrounding the boundary membrane terms edge vertex ring become highly enriched in rab rab effector complex snare and regulatory lipids such as ergosterol diacylglycerol phosphatidyl inositides that are required for the fusion fusion itself then occur around the vertex ring and joining the two boundary membrane and yielded a luminal vesicle within the larger fuse organelle the regulatory lipids such as diacylglycerol ergosterol and phosphatidyl inositol side depends on each other for vertex ring enrichment and the rab rab effector and snare are interdependent for vertex accumulation unexpectedly regulatory lipid enrichment also depends on these protein and these protein requires the lipids as well as shown for endosomal fusion components the relevant vacuolar protein 
a lipid undergoes a complex and highly interdependent process to establish a fusion component microdomain. Each of the protein and lipid needed for establishment of vertex ring microdomain is needed until fusion, presumably for microdomain maintenance. So we have seen that the membrane fusion is governed by different proteins. It can be studied by continuous model or by simulation model. So how we will monitor the membrane fusion? So there are two labels of the fusion, mixing of membrane lipid and mixing of its content. The assay of membrane fusion reports either mixing of membrane lipid or mixing of aqueous content of fused membrane. So for assessing the lipid mixing, we have different methods such as NBD, rhodamine energy transfer, pyrene excimer formation, octadecyl rhodamine B self quenching. These three methods are used to monitor lipid mixing. There is another method which also used for content or aqueous content mixing such as Fersen's quenching assay with ANTS or DPX, Fersen's enrichment assay with TB3 plus DPA or single molecule DNA assay. So all these methods are used to monitor membrane fusion either at lipid mixing level either or content mixing level. So we have let's summarize what we have discussed. So we have discussed how a membrane is fused with each other. We have discussed what are the models that is used to monitor the membrane fusion. We have also discussed how in vitro fusion reaction takes place. So fusion through hemifusion pathway explains that different steps for the fusion of lipid bilayer which involves pre-fusion contacts, point-like membrane partition, hemifusion stack formation, stack expenses, expansion leads to the hemifuse diaphragm and fusion pore formation followed by monolayer formation with different curvature formation based on the composition of the membrane. We have also discussed the different assays that are used to measure membrane fusion. We have discussed how a computer simulated method that is known as coarse gain model is used to simulate or model protein lipid modeling and significance of this model has been discussed for the functional reconstitution of membrane and membrane biogenesis. So in this way we have discussed how what are the different methods that is used to study fusion either it is in vitro method either it is computer method and we have discussed what are the different proteins involved in in vitro fusions.